Hi guys. Today we solve a medium read challenge called Dial Tone from Google CTF 2019. But before that, I would like to thank my team, Open to All, for giving me the chance to be part of them. Let me learn even more about reverse engineering and helping me with other challenges I'm not familiar with. Special thanks to Unbeliever. Let's start with some kind of brainstorming about the title and the given information, followed by a short phase of reconnaissance. I was not sure what a dial tone is. According to Wikipedia, it is a signal sent to a telephone when an off-hook condition is detected. The current European dial tone is a sound from frequency 425 Hz. The description tells us, you might need a pitched perfect voice to solve this one. So we probably have to create synthetically tones because they tend to be pitched perfect. It further says, once you crack the code, the flag is CTF code. This is a really good hind and we can suppose creating the code out of the tones or creating tones out of the code. Let's check the attached file if the SHA-256 equals to the name and unzip it. The extracted file looks like an output file from GNU C compiler. Just to be sure, we determine the file type and open the binary in R2's GUI cutter. The file type double check in the dashboard does not reveal something unexpected. After automatically analyzing it, we see a lot of self-written functions. Main function is rather small and consists of a loop and some conditional jumps. The function always ends in code block hex 137e with opcodes leave and return. The block starting at 134d seems very interesting because the function f writes from standard IO writes n items of data, each size bytes long, to the stream obtaining them from the location given by PTR. As you can see, PDR points to string success. Isn't that what we want? Despite of obtaining arbitrary code execution, of course. Now we know the right answer. As we are solving a read challenge, we simply need to find out how this output could be created. Coming from code block hex 1343, variable rbp minus c must be zero and will therefore be renamed to check. According to the predecessor block, check must have been greater or equal to zero. The value in EAX is moved into check and according to the x8664 calling conventions, EAX is probably returned from R. Function R has two parameters, the pointer to variable 1c, the pointer to variable 220, and function x also has two parameters, the pointer to variable 280, 20, the pointer to variable 220. Because x does not return a value, we assume it changes the value pointer to variable 220. For obvious reasons, we rename it to buffer. The imported function PA simple read from Pulse Audio reads hex 8000 bytes from the connection S and stores it at address data. Now we initialize three variables with zero because they are after another and we only use the pointer to the first variable, we assume it as an array. Another imported Pulse Audio function PA simple new creates a new connection to the sound server. Therefore, we call PA simple new with the default server, the name A out, direction 2, which means PA stream record, the default service, stream name record, format 5, which means PA simple S2432 RE, default channel map and buffering attributes, and save the error code to error. After creating the overview, we have the following certainties. A new connection to the default post audio server is created. While check is greater zero, we loop and will succeed if and if only it is zero. For every loop we try to read hex 8000 bytes 
from the server and stored in data. The function x data buffer may calculate a buffer from data, yet we can't be sure if data does not change too. The functions r and array buffer may return check. In summary, we assume that iout tries to record with a microphone and if we record the right thing, it will finish executing successfully. Our next goal is to investigate R to double check if this function creates a return value and hopefully find a shortcut or at least sufficient values for buffer and data. Jesus! As you can see, function R is quite a bit bigger. Fortunately, it seems that there is only one exit node at 11E6, leaving and returning. There are only three cross-references because block 11E1 lies directly before the exit block. Only coming from 11A9, EAX will be zero. At 11E9, there is another variable tracked against zero. This indicates that the outer loop will be finished. This block is marked as case 8 and is part of the switch case at node 111b. Rx will be 119e because we came from this address. r 2 dec decompiled this node to this. We substitute first occurrence of Rax and Rdx as well as open last equation. Substitute first occurrence of Eax. Substitute first occurrence of Rx and Rdx and insert the address we were coming from. Further simplification gives. Let's look up what RAX should have been to receive FAAE. At address 1710 we can find the wanted result and therefore the following is true. Further simplification gives this. This was nothing fancy, just a typical switch case address lookup table and the according computation. In the previous node, 10fb, we can find two more variables, variable 18 and variable 4, checking against 0. Rename them to check and check 2. Going the control flow backwards, we can find variable 78. It is not changed, so let's assume it still contains function R's first argument. Because variable 25 is overwritten with 0, there is no need to care about it now. The previous code beginning from 10e7 decompiled with r 2 dec and simplified to this. Translate ifs, open operators and substitute eax, eax, eax and eax again. IAX and EAX. In the last chapter we came from switch case 8, therefore pointer to arg1 container plus 4 must be 8 as well. Because finished is bound from above by 8, check and check 2 are bound from below by 0, there are only a few possible values for check and check 2. This simple script gives all possible values. In node 10b0, we simplify the R2 DAC output by substituting RAX, EAX and reversing the IF statement. From this we assume the value in ARG1 container is a pointer. By adding 8 to the pointer we get the following quad word value, but check only if the first byte is 0. We are coming from a loop with counter variable 24 rename it and simplify the r 2 dex decompiled output. For loop and clean before f, eax and rax, clean if by deleting first eax and xmm0 and substitute second eax, clean if clause because he did translate it wrong, substitute xmm0, rename rbp minus offset, Assume variable 7t is starting address of an quad word array of length 4. Lastly, we rename variable 20 to level because it stores the reached level. We are looping for counter from 0 to 3 and if the stored value in the array variable 70 
at position counter is bigger than level, set check to counter and level to that same array value. Because we do not want check to be minus 1 or 3, we can assume that variable 70's first element is bigger than hex 3ff 13 times 0. The second element is bigger than the first element and the third element is bigger than the second. But the fourth element must not be bigger than the third. How is the array variable 70 created? Because it is doing the same four times with different parameters, we transpile this to this to this. By assuming xmm0 is the return value of function f, rdi the first and rsi the second parameter. We double check f and z rdi and rsi are used as parameters and xm0 is set before the two standard finish a function opcodes leave and return. Now we sum up the next three commands in a for loop assuming that the four variables 70, 68, 60 and 58 form the array return values. The previous loop and previous node are doing basically the same. Let's assume the four variables 50, 48, 40 and 38 form the array return values too. Let's rename variable 70 in our assumption to return values and add return values too. Reading through the assumptions and decompiled C code so far, I thought it might be a good idea to do some more recon. Maybe I can find out about those weird constants, also they do not seem to be depend on each other. After searching for diatone frequency, I scanned the in-depth Wikipedia article and found out about keypad frequencies and thought about downloading the audio samples. I refused to do this because I thought using them as input might be too error prone. Search further for diatone numbers and found a tone generator where you can push the buttons and can hear the according sounds. Now I got an idea. The raw and column table header have four frequencies. Maybe... Let's check something in Python. Nice and super sweet. I'm pretty sure this will come in handy soon. There's only variable 80 left unknown. The first code block reveals it is the second argument. A 20,000 byte sized buffer probably initialized in X from the recorded data. Without analyzing F, I had a rough idea what is going on and wanted to give it a try. I assumed F returns a frequency which was cancelled out by the second parameter. The following loop stores a number in check according to the highest found frequency. I thought this is just an implementation to find out which phone button was pressed. I double checked in the decompiled code and that totally made sense. Check and check 2 are coordinates on the keypad. Check ranges from 0 to 3 and check 2 ranges from 0 to 2. Just by checking the control flow of function x and the inherited function y, I presume that it behaves like Goetzel algorithm. According to our assumptions, we know by now that the last finished value must be zero. Now we assume, having started A out, the first parameter of R is an array initialized with zeros. Rename variable 80 to argument 2 container and substitute first RAX. EAX, RAX and EDX, RAX, EAX and return. After we calculated, finished, we jump to case 0. There we set variable 25 if and if only finished was 9. Open operators EAX and return. AL, RAX, EAX, EDX, RAX and RAX. 
So we set the first element of argument one container to zero, increase its second element by one and set the most significant byte of its third element to one. At the end, we return one and therefore stay in main functions loop where we try to read hex 8000 byte from the server and store it in data and call function x and r again. Because we would like to return 1 and stay in the loop and do not want to return minus 1 to cause a fail, we do assume variable 25 equals 1. Finished equals 9 implies check is 2 and check 2 is 1. We stay in the loop until the second element of argument 1 container reaches 8. We discussed the 8th case already. In every cycle we perform the switch case and receive a value finished. We end up having an array of 9 hex numbers. 9, 5, A, 6, 9, 1, 8, D, 0. Now we calculate a tuple, check, check 2, out of each array element and read the numbers from the numpad where check is the number of the row and check 2 is the number of the column. According to the given information, the code must be wrapped in CTF code. So, CTF Baby, hey, I just met you. This is crazy. Live my number. Tomorrow we made it.